Hey guys, this is Justin. Hello and welcome to another video. So today we're discussing the completely unexpected trailer that Star Wars just dropped today for Tales of the Empire. Tales of the Empire will be a series of shorts releasing on May 4th in the style of Tales of the Jedi, and reception to this trailer has been very, very positive. Right now, as of the time I'm recording, it's got over 1.5 million views, it's number one on trending, and unlike, say, the Acolyte, it's got a positive like to dislike ratio, which, I mean, is nice. My big question after this trailer was, is this replacing Tales of the Jedi Season 2, which was previously announced at Star Wars Celebration Europe? I speculated, based on some of the language in the announcement, that it would be its own thing, but StarWars.com released a follow-up article where Tales of the Jedi is specifically referred to as the first season of this show, which, to be fair, is made pretty clear by the Tales of the Jedi logo burning away to Tales of the Empire. I will say, I find this topic much, much more interesting. It seems like we are trading, for me personally, we're trading away number of storylines for the degree to which I'm interested in each individual one. Like, by the time of Tales of the Jedi, I've seen enough of Ahsoka, I've seen enough of the Clone Wars, I personally was ready to move on. Not saying that episodes were bad, the Yaddle one specifically, I quite liked. But it seems to me, unless they're hiding something from this trailer, which is very well possible, that Season 2 will really have two main storylines. The first being Barriss Offie's transformation into some Inquisitor, and the second being Morgan Elsbeth finding her way into the service of Grand Admiral Thrawn. And it's actually this thread that I'm more excited about because it is future focused in a way. Like with Tales of the Jedi in the past, to me, it felt like the Clone Wars was still the big project of that era. With Morgan Elsbeth's story, we're looking forward. This is tying into Ahsoka. It's tying into Grand Admiral Thrawn and perhaps content that we haven't even seen yet. That's not to say that there won't be Clone Wars connections. I mean, Morgan Elsbeth's story starts with the invasion of Dathomir, presumably the same one we saw in the Clone Wars. In between Morgan Elsbeth, the witch character in The Acolyte, and of course, Marin from the Jedi Fallen Order and Survivor series, it feels like the Dathomiri Night Witches are being positioned to take an even bigger role in the continuity. So shows like this could do a lot of legwork for getting the hardcore fans interested. And I mean, as much as I said, I'm tired of the Clone Wars, this shot of Grievous, the shots of the advancing droid armies, really cool. Star Wars has reached incredible levels of animation. It's really hard to believe that during the Clone Wars, people were complaining about the animation, especially during those first few seasons. And to be fair, they were pretty ugly. The level of fidelity that we've reached at this point is incredible. I will say personally, I also find Elizabeth to be a compelling character. I was bummed she died, but I'm interested now to learn her backstory. But we also have Big Blue, Grand Admiral, or actually at this point, Admiral Thrawn himself. And I've got to say, they did a really good job of making him look pretty much ripped straight off of one of the canon book covers. This may be my favorite visual depiction of Thrawn ever. He's pretty much perfect. I am curious though, obviously at this point, Elsbeth is going to enter the service of the Empire, but I'm curious to see what Thrawn has her working on kind of beyond the ordinary duties of an Imperial Admiral. Like, is he already setting her up for his future plans? I think probably because we saw him loading those Night Witch sarcophagus, his sarcophagi, whatever, onto the Chimera. This could even be the point where they talk about Peridia, although to be fair, that also may have been something thrust upon Thrawn by the space whales and not before. Anyway, about 30 seconds in, we get our first look at the second storyline of this season, Barris Offy, the unfinished thread that's been dangling for over a decade now. People, including myself, thought she was a lock for Marak, the Inquisitor, and Ahsoka. Well, she went down that path somewhat, but we don't know know where it ended up. And that's also something I'm very excited about. Is she redeemed at the end? Does she turn and embrace her Jedi past, despite obviously what happened in the Clone Wars and how she was already turning away from the Order? Will she look to that greater light or will she become another Inquisitor, probably destined to be killed by Ahsoka if she's an Inquisitor? It's just the most likely career outcome. A lot of people have pointed out the clone troopers in this scene and yeah, I have no idea what's going on there, but they look interesting. They don't look like standard clones to me. Anyway, back to Elsbeth. It seems like she first survived the CIS attack on Dathomir, then attacked the Empire when they traveled to the planet for whatever reason. It honestly reminds me a bit of how Thrawn was discovered in Star 
Star Wars Legends. But I do just want to point out how good everything looks. Again, the Grand Inquisitor, Thrawn, it's perfect. We also do see Elspeth take up what looks like her position as Magistrate on the planet Corvus. She's got those same guards with her that we see in Ahsoka. What I find interesting is that these look like New Republic officials to me. So it's possible that her story takes place over three parts, the Clone Wars, Imperial Era, then the New Republic pre-Ahsoka era. Listen, it's not a mistake that they picked her character to feature in this. Like, there's a story to be told here, and it's going to tie in to other material, and I'm very excited about that. We also do see, again, what looks like the Clone Wars era when she's facing off against Grievous. She'll probably have to fake her death or something to get into that one. She's good. Is she that good? I mean, probably not. And then most of the rest of the trailer, back to Barris, different looks at her turning into an Inquisitor, perhaps. Like, I don't think her story is going to be as simple as, oh, she turns bad, she becomes an Inquisitor, that's it. One thing that I find really interesting is that if you look at the description for the show, it says, a journey into the fearsome galactic empire through the eyes of two warriors on divergent paths. To me, I'm wondering whether Barris turns back. I mean, diverging paths. We have Morgan Elsbeth, who uses her trauma, embraces the dark side, becomes a tool of the empire, and more specifically, Grand Admiral Thrawn. Is it possible that Barris Offy nearly does the same thing, but makes a different decision at the last moment, perhaps leading to her death? Yeah, and that's probably my guess right now. We see one stage of her training is to fight a pupil. It's overlaid by audio saying, this is your final test, suggesting that that test is the combat, but I think it's very possible that the real final test is her fighting her master, Luminara. Which, like, I don't rock with Luminara, especially from the Clone Wars. She's not that cool, so... Hey, I wouldn't be that upset about it. We do know based on Star Wars Rebels that she does kick the can. Maybe she dies alongside Barris fighting the Empire one final time. That's pretty heavy speculation, but I think it's compelling as well. But guys, that's all I've got for you. Let me know what you thought of this trailer. I'm extremely excited. I mean, that final scene with Vader as well, like having Vader, Anakin of all people, now the new master of Barris. pretty wild stuff. But that's all for me. Until next time, be safe, have a good one. May the Force be with you. Bye-bye.